Welcome to St. Paul's United Methodist Church on this beautiful seventh day, seventh Sunday after Pentecost. My name is Jason Thornton. I'm the pastor here at St. Paul's and I am blessed to serve alongside this amazing congregation. We are all grateful that you could join us this morning for worship. We're going to be having uh, a really wonderful worship service this morning we are receiving uh, five new professing members into St. Paul's. We're going to be receiving Emerson and Lydia Castillo. We're receiving Joe Salamanca and Adam and Yuri Gunn into professing membership. And Adam and Yuri have two children, uh, Kieran and Amara. We're going to be receiving them as baptized children baptized members because if you are baptized you are a member you are a baptized member of our church so um, what a blessing we're going to have this morning that will be happening during our offering the life of the church uh, we have had a wonderful week this last week we uh, held our family promise uh, event and we were able to help uh, two families, two homeless families, uh, as they are searching for a place to live. We were able to give them a place to stay during the week and uh, feed them. And um, we, along with our uh, sister sister church, or who is participating in Family Promise, which is a local. Uh, chapel of the uh, church Jesus Christ Church of Latter-day Saints together we provided uh, meals and space for them this week and they left early this morning um, back to their the the, um, the central place in Stockton uh, where family promise is located but uh, we found a thank you note and we wanted to share this with the congregation Thank you, everyone. We want to thank you for everything you all have done for us to help us through our struggle. You have made our hard times easy and comforting and even enjoyable. I can't explain how appreciative we are. We will be back to say hello. Wish us luck. Sign, thank you, uh, Deborah, Delilah, Evan, and Allison. So, um, you all, we together are doing an amazing ministry to help homeless families off the street. So thank you all for all of your efforts. Now, <clears throat> now let's turn to our opening prayer and pr let's pray together. Lord God, by your grace, you have rescued us from the territories of darkness and transplanted us into the kingdom of your beloved Son. Root us firmly in the good news of your forgiveness and love. Water with us your steadfast faithfulness and abundant hope that we may grow in knowledge of you and your love and become strong in faith, endurance, and patience, joyfully giving thanks to you, our Father. Feed us with your wisdom and understanding that we may bear the good fruit of kindness, love, and every good work. Make our church into a tree of life for all who seek shelter and fellowship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you all to stand as you're able, uh, join, joining in our opening hymn, We Are God's People. That's number 2220 in The Faith We Sing, the Black Hymnal.
continue standing and take that flame, that flame of Christ's love that binds us and welcome each other in the peace of Christ. Now's the time in our worship service where we lift up our prayers, all of our joys and concerns to God. So please join me now in an attitude of prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, You know the troubles of our world because you lived among us. Lord, you know the chaos, the uncertainties of life. You know the frustrations. You know the despair. You know how we suffer in illness, how we suffer violence, how we suffer economic distress. So Lord, we come to you this morning and pray for your healing Holy Spirit to move among us, to heal our bodies, to heal our relationships, to heal our souls. In particular, Lord, this morning we lift up to you Bill Crothers. We lift up Leoma Negley. We continue to lift up May Abitangle, Sue Benicki, Jennifer and her boys. Lord, we lift up Bud and Brenda. Lord, in your love and mercy, hear our prayers. We also this morning recognize that we are in fire season and many people and communities are in danger. Lord, we lift up those impacted by the fires, those who are displaced, those who have the potential of losing everything. We lift up the firefighters, and we lift up all of the people who help. Lord, in your love and mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, <clears throat> Lord, we also lift up this morning the family of Joyce Shirley, um, a longtime uh, friend of our church who has passed. We lift up her and we lift up her family to your loving care that you comfort them in their loss. Lord, we also lift up Nicole and Gil as they grieve the passing of their mother, Lucette. Lord, in your love and mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, at the same time, we lift all these concerns to you. We also lift up our joys. We lift up our joy in being able to help to families who are struggling through homelessness. Lord, <clears throat> we lift up the joys of all of our members uh, who are celebrating birthdays this month. We thank you for their lives, for their presence among us. Lord, we lift up the blessing of being able to receive 
new members into our fellowship. Lord, in your love and mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious Lord Jesus, we thank you for your spirit, your comforter, our advocate that you have sent to be among us, to help us to be in your presence. And Lord, we thank you for all that you have taught us, especially your teaching us how to pray. Now we join in the prayer which you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, brothers and sisters, I invite you to stand as we join in our prayer hymn, which is number 430 in the red hymnal. O oh, Master, let me walk with thee. Please be seated. Now it's time for us to turn our attention to uh, our Celebrate Wonder series. This is the time in our service for the child in all of us. So let's celebrate wonder together. Hey friends, it's Carly. In our Bible story today, we are reading a psalm of praise. Last week, we talked about joy and how the earth sings praise to God. This week reminds us that there are so many different ways that we can express joy, and together we can create beautiful sounds of praise. It's like one big giant thank you from all of us. Last year, I was in band at my school. My favorite part was learning about all the different instruments, from trombones, to drums, to flutes, and the triangle. 
I realized that everything made its own unique sound, and each sound could be awesome by itself. The drums keep the beat, and the brass gives us some cool melodies. Each instrument we added made the song more special. I decided to play the flute. We all practiced separately with our own groups to learn the music. The best part for me was the first time that we all came together to play. I knew that the flute sounded cool alone, but I had no idea how beautiful all the instruments would sound together. Even when we weren't perfect, you could feel the excitement in the room and the energy from us playing together. I think our psalm writer today might have been in a band too. They invite all types of instruments to come together and for us to praise God in community. They say, bring the horns, the drums, the strings, and the cymbals. We know that each of these instruments is special alone, but playing them together sends a beautiful message to God of all the things we're thankful for. That's definitely a reason to celebrate. So let's praise together, friends. Wherever you are, grab something and join in. Maybe you want to clap your hands or stomp your feet. Maybe you have an instrument or want to sing. Whatever sound you're making, know that you're included in this beautiful chorus of praise. The writer said, let every living thing praise the Lord. This means none of us are left out. Remember, as we sing and play our instruments, all of nature joins with us too. The crickets show their sound, the rain offers its music, and the wind joins us too. Let's praise. Now, it's your turn to wonder. Okay, uh, now it's uh, time for the children to go to our uh, kid zone if they would like to join Miss Rhiannon and Miss Faith, uh, who will take them next door. Now is the time in our worship service where we offer the life of our church, all of the events and activities up for your prayers and God's blessing. Um, I have one more prayer request that I need to lift up to you all. Uh, let's keep Amy Pratali and her family in your prayers as they, uh, they struggle with COVID. And also, um, have somebody who has given me a note that there will be uh, some get well cards in the fellowship hall uh, for May Abtangle. They'll be uh, located by the coffee, so easy to locate. So, okay. Now, uh, we've already talked about uh, our family promise. Uh, was very successful this week. Um, we also, uh, I need to lift up that we're having usher training this morning uh, we'll meet at 1130 uh, right there in the back of the sanctuary at the in the narthex and we'll talk about what the narthex is during the usher training for those who are unfamiliar with that term we'll be meeting next to the credenza there where we store all of the supplies for the ushers so if you would like to be an usher Join us there. If you've already uh, said yes and signed up, I hope that we'll see you there this morning for usher training. You know, uh, ushers and greeters, ushers and greeters, because there are two different, uh, two different kinds of workers. Uh, the greeters are outside greeting people as they arrive, and the ushers are like a host. And in welcoming somebody onto our church campus, it's not only uh, up to the ushers and the greeters, it's up to all of us, each of us. And so what I've done in, in our uh, newsletter this week is I've included a little article about 
what it means to have a welcoming ministry, uh, some different ideas and suggestions for how we can continue to be a welcoming church. Now, I have to say, this is one of the most welcoming churches I have ever been a part of, and I have been blessed to be a part of this church. Um, you know, but it's always good to look at how we welcome and just to kind of keep that in mind so we can uh, help to strengthen our welcoming. Um, okay, Tammy is wearing a t-shirt that we had made prior to Pentecost. Come and model your t-shirt, Tammy. Some people were not aware that we have uh, been started making t-shirts for St. Paul's. Uh, this one has a, the, a, a image of the Pentecost window, um, which is along here somewhere. I can't see it right now. It might be hidden from me. It's right over there. So it's on the Pentecost window is on the back, and then on the front we have our cross and flame with our open open hearts, open minds, open doors uh, slogan. And, um, and then uh, on the back, we have uh, some words from one of my favorite hymns. Hold on. <laughs> oh, it's, oh, for a thousand tongues we sing our great Redeemer's praise. So uh, if you would like to purchase a, a t-shirt, email the office uh, or text me. And when I get enough, enough orders, I've already got one. If I get enough, when I get enough orders, I will order some more just because it, it costs money to do some shipping. And so we have to have enough to make it worth it. Can you let me know too? Yeah. You can also let Tammy know. Oh, we have uh, colors. We can order them in white, red, and uh, black. And it's, uh, they, they're $25 each. So, okay. Huh? No, that $25 includes the shipping. Yeah, $25 includes the shipping. So, okay. Now, now it is, now it is my pleasure to welcome our five uh, folks who are going to be joining our uh, congregation, Adam and Yuri Gunn. Emerson and Lydia Castillo and Jobella Salamanca, also known as Joe, come forward. Don't be shy. Come on. Center stage. All right. Okay. All right. I'm going to stand over here because I'm going to need to read this off of the, off of the monitors. So uh, let me introduce, though, before we start, Adam Gunn, his wife, Yuri Gunn, Joe Salamanca, Lydia Castillo, and Emerson Castillo. So it's a blessing to have them joining us this morning. Let's begin now. So as members of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, say, I will. Okay. As members of St. Paul's United Methodist Church, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, say, I will. Okay. Okay. Members of the household of God, I commend Adam, Yuri, and their children, Emerson, Lydia and Joe, to your love and care, do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. 
together now. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church. We renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. We have, along with our uh, membership certificate, uh, a little gift we like to give uh, to our new members when they join. This morning we're giving uh, three simple rules, a Wesleyan way of living by Reuben Job. So, uh, Take a picture of you real quick. Okay. All right. God bless you. All right. And now it's time for us to offer our wealth, to offer our gifts to God on the altar. Uh, the ushers will come down the aisle and with offering plates as we uh, enjoy Lisa and Anne presenting our offertory.
please be seated. Please join me in our prayer of thanksgiving. Loving God, we thank you for everything you have given us down to this very day. We thank you for the stars of the heavens, for the sun and the moon, for the majestic mountains and the deep seas. We thank you for the broad and fruitful plains. We thank you for our country, for our nation, for our families, for our communities. We thank you for our friends. We thank you for this church. Lord, everything you give is good. We thank you most of all for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. Jesus, who gives us the blessing of forgiveness, reconciliation, and new life now. Lord, in gratitude for all of these gifts and so much more, we offer our gifts to you. We pray that you take this offering this morning, that you bless it and sanctify it, and use this offering through St. Paul's to help spread your love, build your peace, and grow a deep gratitude for the life which you give us in our community and beyond. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we continue in worship, we invite you to hear these words of scripture from Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 15. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Watch out that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental principles of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of the deity swells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision, by the removal of the body of flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and the authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of today's scripture to take into the world. We began our exploration of Paul's letter to the Colossians two Sundays ago with the observation that all too often when we look around at the events of the world, we see people who are wicked prospering. And we see people who are good suffering. And we wonder, where is the justice? We noted how when people turn to partisan politics to try to find solutions and bring justice into the world, all too often they end up bringing more division, more harm, and more injustice. 
We heard through Paul's letter to the Colossians how Jesus gives us a different way of bringing justice into the world, of bringing justice into our lives. The way of Christ. The way of the world, which is the way of partisan politics, is the way of the fallen world. It's a fallen way of seeking justice, where essentially the goal is to create enemies and and then blame them for the problems of the world, and then attack and conquer the enemies, and in that victory claim that justice has been restored. But if we step back, we can clearly see that those who were defeated did not see justice. They see that a new injustice has occurred. And then they begin working against the other side, the victorious side, to see that their own idea of justice should prevail. And the conflict goes on and on. The way of Christ stands in total opposition to the way of partisan politics. The way of Christ helps us to find justice through bringing people together, finding common ground, building friendships with each other, sharing each other's burdens, and healing broken relationships. The way of Christ seeks justice for everyone. The way of Christ is the only way that true justice can be brought into our lives. Now, last week we explored the way of Christ as a way of walking blamelessly, which is to say to stop focusing on blaming others and to start focusing on cooperating with each other to find solutions. This week we are focusing on how the way of Christ is walking in faith and thanksgiving. And I, Let's start by looking at what, what does it mean to walk in faith. Do you all have any ideas about what, what walking in faith means? Go ahead, shout them out. Don't be shy. What does walking in faith mean to you? Living the words of Christ. Okay, having faith in the words of Christ and living that. Other ideas? What was that? Being unafraid. Okay. Perfect. Yes. To believe in God? Yes. Okay, we have a second to that one. Believing during hard, believing in God. Being joyful during hard times. Okay. Other ideas? Spreading the word of God. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If we examine what walking in faith means, we soon find that what we, we start talking about other words, about believing in something, about in God, believing in God, about trusting in God, trusting in Jesus. Um, the Greek word that, that we translate as faith is the word pistis. And we generally trans, translate pistis as either belief or faith or trust. So all, all of those together. So when Jesus says, believe in God and believe also in me, he's saying, have faith in God. Have faith also in me. He's saying, have trust in God. Have trust also in me. Belief, faith, and trust all go together. Now here's what I hope is a good illustration to help us understand the power of walking by faith. Have you ever heard the saying that 
Money makes the world go round. Yeah. Well, I have to say that's not true. Not at all. In fact, my argument is that faith makes the world go round. So I have here with me, I have here with me that I took out of my wallet a dollar bill. Okay? And then I also have a check that my wife Tammy wrote to me for a hundred dollars because I asked her this morning, honey, would you write me a check for a hundred dollars for a sermon illustration? And she trusts me. <laughs> so she did. Now, my question is, which one of these is worth more? The check, okay. Somebody said the dollar. Okay. The check. Okay. Raise your hands if you feel that the, the dollar is worth more. Okay, a few people. How about the check? Raise your hands if the check is worth more. Okay, well, I have to say the check is actually worth more um, because it actually takes 9.7 9 cents to print this check, whereas it only takes 5.4 cents to print this dollar. Would I have had a $100 bill, though? The $100 bill would be worth more because apparently it takes 15 cents to print a $100 bill. Okay. So, now, you might be thinking, wait a minute, Jason. That $1 bill and that check and what that check worth does not really have to do with the cost of printing them, does it? There's something more that, that, that adds to their value. And I would say you're right. These two slips of paper, what, what they are worth has more to do with faith than cost. Okay? If I were to take these, these into a bank, the teller is going to look at each of them, and she's going to notice the symbols and the numbers printed on them. And by the words and the numbers printed on them, she will believe... Note the word believe. She will believe that this $100 check is worth 100 times more than this dollar bill. And I trust, there's that word, I trust that if that teller cashes that check, she will indeed give me $100, right? That's all in trust. What if... <clears throat> What if when I asked the teller to cash this check, she said, oh, sorry, we don't have $100 to give you today. How about 10? I'll give you $10. How would that work? I'm hearing a little reaction out there. So people are going, yeah. When I asked Tammy that this morning, she said, well, I get pretty mad. <laughs> right? That wouldn't work very well. If we could not trust that the banks would give us the cash designated on our checks, people would never use checks again, would they? No. In order for our financial system to work, the banks have to be trustworthy enough to have enough cash on hand to cover our obligations. And the flip side is that the banks have to be able to trust that there will be $100 in the checking account of that check, won't they? They trust that. If people regularly wrote checks for more than they had in their account, the system couldn't function either. You would go to jail. That's why people go to jail. Yeah, exactly. Because we have to have a way of maintaining trust. <clears throat> Are you beginning to see that the, that the actual money isn't worth anything? Actually, 9.7 cents, 5.4 cents. The actual money isn't worth really much of anything without our belief in the money. 
without our trust and trustworthiness, without our faith and faithfulness, our financial system would collapse. So it's not money, it's faith that makes the world go round. One of the main reasons our country has been so financially successful is the strong Judeo-Christian emphasis we put on faith and faithfulness. There, there are other countries which do not have this cultural focus on faith and faithfulness, and they are caught up in a high level of financial corruption, and as a result, they remain more impoverished. Now, there are other reasons a country might be impoverished, but that is one reason that a country could be impoverished is the corruption in their financial system. Well, right now, let's hear what Paul has to say again. Paul tells us, quote, As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. If we walk in the way of Jesus, we are rooted in faith and faithfulness, and we are built up. God builds us up through faith. Another way of saying this is that through walking in faith, we become blessed with abundance. Living a life of faith brings us spiritual abundance. And the abundance in our relationships. When we have faithful relationships, we have great relationships. And from our spiritual abundance, from our relation, relational abundance, we can give thanks. In other words, when we're grounded in faith, we live a life filled with gratitude. I think it's very interesting that we've had some sociological studies on people's, happy, on people's happiness. And time after time, those studies have shown that people who score the highest on the happiness index all share a deep sense of gratitude. And those who score lowest on the happiness index are filled with resentment. In other words, they're filled with blame. This result, and this result cuts across any economic levels because there are people who are living at or below the poverty line who do have high levels of gratitude and they score high on the happiness index. And there are many people who are wealthy who have very low levels of gratitude. They score low on the happiness index because they carry higher levels of resentment and blame. So the way of Christ, again, is to set aside our blame, to walk by faith and walk faithfully, to walk with gratitude. What can we be grateful for? Paul tells us the fullness of God was brought to us by Jesus. And now through Jesus, you have been made complete. You have been given the fullness of God through Jesus. And that fullness of God can make you complete. Through Jesus, our old sinful self has been circumcised. It has been cut away from us, leaving our true self. Paul tells us when you were buried with Jesus in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. In other words, through walking in the way of Christ, you have been given a fresh start, another chance. You have been given a new life now and an unending life with God into eternity. So there is nothing to fear Somebody said, walking in faith means not fearing. There is nothing to fear. 
Because we have faith, we have confidence, we have trust in Christ, his forgiveness, and the new life he gives us every day. So trust in God, walk in faith, live in God's abundance with thanksgiving, and you will find justice. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let's stand together and sing our hymn of dedication, which is number 3113 in the green hymnal, A Wilderness Wandering People. We are a wilderness wandering people on a journey of the soul. May we find our destination in our longing to be whole. Our holy God is calling to receive this final blessing. Walk in the way of Christ. Follow the path of faith. Find gratitude. Find happiness. Find justice. Go in peace. Amen.